producer Lynn Levy. The smell of a dead whale is you have to experience to know to know what it's like. It's like nothing I've ever smelled. This is Craig Smith, uh, this, professor of oceanography. It really is. Yeah, it's really putrid. Back when Craig was a graduate student. This is in 1982. He heard there was a dead whale floating off the coast of San Diego. About a third out of the water with seabirds on it, pecking at it. How big? Around 25 to 30 feet long. So what is that, like a train car? More like a, a size of a small yacht, I guess. Whoa. Big freaking whale. Yeah. And Craig wanted to sink that whale. No one had ever studied what happens when a whale sinks to the seafloor. People just speculated about it. So no one had ever followed it down to the bottom? No one had followed the whale down to the bottom. Huh. Right? So we, we towed the, the carcass out to sea. And they had all these little scraps of steel that they tied to the whale's tail one at a time. About 2,000 pounds. And nothing. It wasn't enough to, to sink the whale. Whale kept floating there like a big smelly balloon. Its <laughs> belly was all full of decompositional gas. And the captain of the ship goes, well... I have a big rifle. Let's bring that out. So he got out his rifle. And, <laughs> and all the other guys on the boat take out their guns. Shooting the whale balloon. Yeah, yeah. This also doesn't work. It doesn't work. It didn't really do anything. But Craig tried again and again, and eventually... Not with that whale, but with others. He got to see something so cool. So a whale dies and sinks down into the, the, the dark. And... And then... This incredible cycle begins. Within minutes... Scavengers will be at the carcass. Lots of them. How do these little creatures see the whale if it's so dark? They smell it. They smell the whale. Mm -hmm. Within hours, it may well have hundreds of hagfish on it. They're terrified. These eel-like animals, they have grinding plates instead of teeth, and they burrow into the, the carcass. Hundreds, like a hagfish convention. This writhing mass of, of eels. What does that look like? Well, it looks like a, like a giant medusa head. Over the next few days, a bunch of other scavengers show up. Including uh, stone crabs, shrimp, sea scuds, sharks, crustaceans. Huge feeding frenzy. Flesh flying everywhere. Sometimes the hagfish get ticked off and they try to defend their territory. Hagfish have a very interesting ability to produce mucus. Oh. Um, you can put a couple of hagfish into a bucket of water and kick it and they can produce enough mucus to essentially turn the bucket of water into something like gelatin. Wow. So it's like a Medusa head in a cloud of mucus. And all that is just the first stage. The mobile scavenger stage. Okay. So what happens after that? Well, after the mobile scavenger stage is the enrichment opportunist stage. At that point... The whale is beginning to look pretty dilapidated. Little bits of whale soft tissue get implanted in the sea floor. And so the ground around the whale becomes like sort of its own little ecosystem and a bunch of new animals show up. They're worms. Uh, they're wriggly little worms. Just like tons of them. We can, we can get 30 or 40,000 of them per square meter. Sometimes the sediment around a whale fall looks like a lawn of grass where these worms are just wriggling, sticking up uh, out of the sediment and waving back and forth. What, what, what color are these worms? Do you know? I think they're white. So a field of white worms. Yeah. White grass. It's kind of ghostly. Yeah. And finally... The last stage. Something we call the sulfur-loving stage. At this point, the whale looks like a skeleton just covered with this actually beautiful mat of white bacteria. Huh. Um, and it's fluffy and just looks like a polar bear's fur. Covering the bones of the whale? Yeah. Think about a whale skeleton draped in a, a polar bear fur coat. Huh. Sulfur is coming out of the bones and the bacteria are just clustering around, sucking it up. for years.
When you step back and look at it, these dead whales, they become like planets. And you find creatures living on them that you don't find anywhere else. There are now about 55 species that haven't been found in any other habitat, species of animals that only live on whale falls. Does that mean that these creatures, like the whale, is their entire world? They don't know anything else? For some of them, yeah. What do they do the rest of the time? I mean, this can't happen that often. Well, that's a good question. It may be that they are living as what we, as fugitive species. In other words, they just drift around, sort of waiting. Can I say hoping? For... And when that happens... They grow quickly, produce hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of larvae that they then broadcast out into the water column. Then their babies drift around in the darkness, waiting. Until... A few of them find another such habitat, tens or maybe even hundreds of kilometers away. And repeat. So all together, I mean, how long can, can a whale fall last? Well, a whale fall can last. A large whale skeleton, that of a blue, large blue whale or a fin whale, can support a community for 50 to 75 years. Wow. Which really astounded us. And how does that compare to the lifespan of the whale? Well, it's probably pretty comparable, actually. Whales live uh, on the order of uh, 50 to 70 years. There's something kind of poetic about that, the idea that, you know, for the same amount of time that the whale lived, it's, it's going to support this life. Yeah, it, it, is, it is very appealing. Uh, okay, ready? Okay. This is Radio Lab. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you, you start. Yeah. Okay. This is Radio Lab. Today we're talking about loops. I'm Robert Krulwich. I'm Jad Abumran. This is Radio Lab. It's all about loops. Yep, I'm Jad. And I'm Robert. You're listening to Radio Lab. Today we're talking about loops. I'm Robert. I'm Jad. And it's all about loops. Yep, I'm Jad. And I'm Robert. We're talking about loops.